Hello, fellow book lovers, both readers and writers. I am Maddie Dalrymple. I write the Anne Kinnear suspense novels and suspense shorts and the Lizzie Ballard thrillers. And I also write, speak, podcast, and consult on the writing craft and the publishing voyage as the indie author. And this is my video series, What I Learned, where I ask authors two questions related to their latest book. What did they learn from that book that they would like to share with their fellow writers? And what did they learn from that book that they would like to share with their fellow readers? And I am joined today by Michelle Glukovac. Hey, Michelle, how are you doing? Hi, Maddie. I'm so good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. To give our viewers a little bit of background on you, Michelle Glugovac is the podcast matchmaker, a podcast publicist and host of the award-winning podcast, My Simplified Life. She works with entrepreneurs, authors, and experts to hone their storytelling abilities, grow their businesses, and elevate themselves as thought leaders. And Michelle was my guest in episode 137 of the Indie Author Podcast, which was using podcasts to support your book launch. And Michelle is a wife, mom of two, stepmom of two, and a fur mom, which I am also, I think you can see one of my, <laughs> my girls on the chair there. And she has her BA and MS in law and is the founder and CEO of the MLG Collective. And her first book, How to Get on Podcasts, debuts in February of 2024. And so today I am asking Michelle the two what I learned questions about how to get on podcasts, starting with what did you learn that you would like to share with your fellow writers? The first thing that I would say is that there's always changes. It's a complete journey, including my pub date is now in January. Oh, good. <laughs> a sooner pub date. That's unusual. <laughs> yes. Yes. It, it was an unexpected journey of I didn't realize how alone I would feel at times. And I, I think that even when you have a traditional publisher, an agent, you have a team, but there's a lot that falls on you. And there's a lot of silent times and times where you have to be patient that something else is going on behind the scenes and it's okay. But I didn't realize that as an author, this is what we all go through. You know, I had, I lost my agent because she went to work at a publisher. And then within two weeks, I lost my editor because she was laid off. And then my pub date was changed three times. So it's a constant ebb and flow of change, of a roller coaster of, is this really coming out? Do you know, am I really an author? Is this going to be in the hands of readers at some point? And the answer is yes. And you are not alone. Go to your author community. That is what I would tell all authors is that you aren't alone. So reaching out to other authors, other people in the publishing industry and saying, this is what I'm going through. Is it normal? And to get the feedback of, yes, that is completely normal. This is, you are not special by any means, <laughs> was a relief to hear for me because I, it was brand new. I, this was uncharted territory. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't expect to lose people that were on the team, you know, and so close together. I vowed never to take another camping trip when I'm publishing a book. Uh, since it kept happening on camping. Oh, no. <laughs> but, you know, I would say reach out to your author community and get to know other people because they will be supportive. And that is how you're linked to knowing that you aren't alone in this entire journey and that it will all end up being OK. And that, yes, you are special and unique, but the situation probably isn't someone else has been there. That's very interesting. And I have to ask you, how you chose your author community or how you found your author community. And then was there any part of your interactions with that community where you had to vet the responses you were getting? Like if you were in a community and someone said, oh yeah, I've never lost an editor. That just must be you or something bizarre, <laughs> you know, something that you could look back on now and, and realize was bizarre. Did you have to vet the information you were getting from your community at all? You know, I didn't have anybody push back with something of saying, like, it's just you. I, I was lucky in that regard. A lot of my community comes from those that I've had on my own podcast of guests that I, you know, have interviewed and I've read their books. Or one in particular is a career coach for writers. And she had introduced me to some other authors. And just knowing that these people had already published books, I I wasn't afraid to simply say, hey, this is what's going on. And I think that for a lot of us, especially to me, it was like, oh, my agent left to go write, you know, to go work somewhere else. And, oh, now what's happening at the publisher? Like some of it was, is it, is it me or is it just the industry? And to, to communicate that this is what I'm feeling and to get the feedback of, 
oh, the industry is like that. And it's been like this for years. And who knows if it's ever going to change. But to know that this is not out of the norm was a relief. And yet at the same time, if I would have known this was all coming, I don't know <laughs> if I would have wanted to have known that it was coming. Yeah, I have, after many years of trial and error, I've assembled what I think of as the perfect publishing support team. And I live in terror that one of them is going to like win the lottery and move to <laughs> Fiji and not want to either do my edits or do my book covers or do my whatever anymore. So that is, it's a scary, it's a scary thing to face. Yeah. So, so that's a tip, a great tip for your fellow writers. What about your fellow readers? What did you learn that you'd like to share with your fellow readers? You should listen to podcasts to get to know the authors. <laughs> there's there's the tie into the book. But, you know, how much goes into writing what you're reading? I, I think it's it's so important for a reader to not only know what goes into it, but to know the person behind the book and that it's OK to reach out to them. I, I think that a lot of people look to authors as a type of celebrity, myself included. I treasure my autographed books. But nobody reaches out to the author, you know, because they think of them as some untouchable person per se. And yet every author I have ever reached out to is obviously a simple human being, just like you and I, and they thrive. We thrive. I can now say we. That's something I'm not used to on getting this feedback that you enjoyed reading the book, what you loved learning about it, how you're sharing it with others, and to simply reach out and communicate with the author. You know, there's, I have friends who are bookstagrammers who have been amazed that an author will reply to their DM. And yet the author's like, of course, I'm going to reply. Like, this is amazing. So readers, don't be afraid to reach out to the author, to say hi, to say you appreciated their book, to invite them onto your podcast or wherever it is. We love it. And, and it builds more community and it, it really humanizes the author and to know that there's a connection with the reader as well. So reach out to the authors of your favorite books because they will communicate back most chances. I think even Colleen Hoover is replying to people. So it doesn't matter how big the author is, you will get a response most likely. Yeah, I love that. I love that advice. And I also think it made me think of the whole reviews scenario uh -huh. where you know, authors are always hoping that readers will post happy reviews about their books because that's the best way to expand an audience, other than podcasts, of course, which we'll be talking about next week on an episode of the Indie Author Podcast. But I think a lot of people don't because they're intimidated. A lot of readers don't because they're intimidated by the idea of writing a review and even a, sh a little short review. You know, a one sentence review is going to be greatly appreciated. Yeah. And as and an noticed author, by the author. Yes. And authors, you hate asking for a review because, you know, you're, you're asking for a favor and we've already asked you to buy the book. It's like, how many favors can we ask for? But at the same time, the author has to say, will you review my book? Can you write a review? So definitely all you can do for an author to share their book and to do it in a free way, it doesn't cost money to promote a book, to share it in your Instagram or post a picture of it, to write a review. It's greatly appreciated and goes a long way. Yeah. And I will say the same of podcasts as well, uh, dropping yes. the podcast host a note. And actually something I'd be curious to talk with you about, not necessarily here, but when we record our conversation for uh, the podcast episode is that it does sometimes kind of feel like yelling into the void. And, you know, I, I love the conversations I have with people. And then I, I edit them, I produce them, I put them out on the podcast platform and who knows what's happening to them other, you know, you can download stats and things like that, but just that note saying that somebody actually listened to them. I was actually at a event where authors were doing readings and I was speaking to one of the other people who was reading and um, he said, oh, I just listened to your last podcast episode. And I said, really? And he said, you say that like you're surprised. And I'm like, I kind of am because... There's like no, there's no yeah. immediate feedback. I completely get that. My husband has some former coworkers who will say, oh, I heard Michelle interview so-and-so and it was great. And I went, wait, they're listening? What? Yeah. Why are your friends listening? Like who else is listening out there? I'm always surprised or if somebody responds to my newsletter and has feedback and I'm like, 
oh, you you not only listened, but then you read my newsletter too. What? Wow. Yeah, it does feel like you're just putting things out there. And yet people are listening, they're reading, and you never know who it is. <laughs> yeah. So much fun. Well, definitely a theme to our discussion today. But Michelle, it is always so much fun to talk with you about things podcasting and otherwise. So please let everyone know where they can go to find out more about you, how to get on podcasts and everything else you do online. Thank you, Maddie. You can go to michelleglogovac.com and it has all of the information for how to get on podcasts. You can also go to the mlgcollective.com, which is my business website. And I am on all of the social media platforms at Michelle Glogovac or at the podcast matchmaker. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you.